Hey, what's up guys? This is our second part talking about semiconductor theory. We started out yesterday and we hit on basic things. What are conductors? What are insulators? Uh, we talked about how the atoms all want to be electrically neutral and how they want to have eight electrons in their outer shell and how they will share electrons with each other to make sure that they have eight electrons in their outer shell. Then we finished up by talking about doping the silicon matrix. If we dope it with argon, we end up with an N type, a negative type, because it has an excess of electrons. And then doping with gallium makes it a P or a positive type because it has an excess of holes. And we talked about the most basic semiconductor, the diode, and how it works, how the electrons and the holes can cross the depletion layer, allowing current to flow. So we said that current flows one direction and the electrons flow in another direction. So here, here is our basic circuit. Let's start off with a battery. And from the battery, there is a resistor. This is the positive side of the battery. This is the negative side of the battery. So let me zoom in here. Now, when we connect this, we know that current flows in this direction. Current flows from the positive side of the battery through our circuit, returning to the negative side of the battery. But then I also told you that electrons flow in the opposite direction. Electrons are repulsed by the negative side of the battery, and that makes them flow opposite to the current flow. So while the electrons are flowing this way, the holes are flowing this way. And now we say, how can a hole move? A hole is not a thing, it's the lack of a thing. How is it possible that they can move? Well, it's more semantics than anything else. So let's, let me try and make this clear for you guys as best I can with a little model that I've set up here. So this is our silicone matrix model. I know it's nothing but an ice cube tray. So these nuts, these nuts will represent our electrons and the spaces, of course, are the holes. So how is this going to work? Well, here's what's going to happen. And it's really simple once you kind of think about it. Our electrons move in this direction. The hole as you can see, has now moved in the opposite direction. And this is the direction of current flow. So as more electrons move in this direction, the holes move in this direction. And since it is a complete circuit, they make a circular path and return from whence they came. I hope that can kind of help you wrap your head around it because electron theory versus current theory is one of the most difficult things I think to grasp in electrical engineering. Our uh, conventions of electron flow theory and conventional current flow theory are all really arbitrary and they're invented or discovered or coined or however you want to say it really by Benjamin Franklin in 1752. Now he could have just as easily said black and white 
as opposed to positive and negative. Because, again, they are just arbitrary titles. They really don't hold any particular meaning. And, in fact, the difference between them doesn't affect any real-world behavior or any computational results. You know, in general, analyzing an electrical circuit yields results that are independent of the assumed direction of current flow. We just use conventional current flow now as our accepted notation. So what is important for us to take note of in all of this is that neither n-type or p-type silicon has a charge of its own. They're both electrically neutral. And while it's true that n-type has extra free electrons that increases conductivity and p-type has fewer which helps increase in its conductivity in the opposite way in both cases the extra conductivity comes from having added neutral atoms of impurities to the silicon that was neutral to start with and we can't create electrical charges out of thin air okay so we we finished off yesterday by talking about the diode which is basically a two-layer silicon sandwich and the next step would of course be the transistor which is the three-layer silicon sandwich so this will be our emitter which we will call negative this will be the collector, which we will call positive. And of course, that means this is the base. So the emitter has its atoms. And the collector has its atoms. And of course, the base has its atoms because it's not nothing. It is definitely something, right? So if we attach a small positive charge to the base, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to make the emitter negatively charged. And it's going to pull electrons from the emitter into the base. Now, it's electron flow. So when this happens, our small charge put in here causes these electrons to flow to find the holes over here. So as they jump across here to find the holes, some of the holes also cross here into this depletion layer. And that allows that flow of electrons to create a positively charged flow from the collector to the emitter. And that is really about as far into this as we can go in an undergraduate level. If we want to go deeper, we have to talk about band theory. And that is more physics than electrical engineering, and that is totally out of my ballpark. I have a basic understanding of it, but not enough to try and teach you guys about it. So this, anyway, this would be your BJT, your bipolar junction transmit or transistor. Uh, FETs and JFETs are a little bit different. And if you guys are interested, we'll move on to that. But you're going to have to let me know down below because I don't want to keep beating on something if you guys aren't really interested in hearing more about it. So, I hope that um, gave you a little bit of knowledge in semiconductor theory and electron flow versus current flow. Again, it's arbitrary. You can use either one. Just don't switch between them while you're modeling or building a circuit. Keep it all one way and everything will be good. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, thumbs up, please comment share don't forget to subscribe and boy have you guys been subscribing we're over 8900 subscribers right now wow incredible thank you all so much for your support of this channel it means a lot to me 
Anyway, that's it. I'm out. Peace.